I think I just found the newest movie for the Furb Guy 2 review. <sighs> you know those other Home Alone movies that are in this pie, which is included as part of this Home Alone paint bucket? Well, I decided, randomly, to take a look at one of the movies that's included in this pie. And you know that one of the movies that was included in this pie? Well, you thought I decided to take a look at Taking Back the House, the movie that thought that would have ended the series. But no! Instead, I decided to take a look at The Holiday Heist. Yes, the one featuring Malcolm McDowell doesn't focus on the McAllisters and takes place in the home of all the Stephen King novels. A.K.A. Maine. And... I think I have found an episode of the Furb Guy from this episode. Or this movie. My mistake. <laughs> Seriously, if there is anything I have to say before I even talk about this movie, it is this. If Headhunter Productions of Hunter Reviews, or other way around, if they get around to reviewing that movie, I insist that they talk about that movie. I am interested to see what they have to say in mind of that movie. Because that film, that weird film, it makes me wonder, why was it made? Why did it need to be made? And why on earth is Alex from A Clockwork Orange in it? <sighs> so, let's talk about it. So, in this lovely fest, instead of focusing on the McAllisters, we're focusing on the Baxter family. And they're moving all the way from California to Maine. And the back and Finn, the young ten-year-old kid, is obsessed with playing video games. His teenage sister is obsessed with her iFruit phone. And they don't listen to a thing her parents say. Or, or I, should, I should say, her teenage sister doesn't listen to a thing that her parent that her parents say, or at least they don't give a crap. The brother is obsessed. He feels like he won't fit into society, and he more or less fits into the society of playing video games. The mother is basically like overbearing on video games. And there is so much that happens in this film. It is crazy. One moment as they're about to leave for the party, the mother takes the the gaming controller. And I'm like, well, sometimes video game consoles come with two controllers. There's a funny thing with gaming consoles like that. Don't you think you ought to look when you move? And besides that, when you took the teenage sister's phone, don't you, or at least took her head earbuds, don't you think that she would have, like, probably played the thing full blast, either through her, like, little speakers, or her, like, amplifier that she has or something, probably at 
something, party or something, probably just to keep herself occupied, or perhaps she'll have it in her room or something like that. And another thing is that the criminals in this film that Malcolm McDowell runs, we have an emo here who is just obsessed with her boyfriend and then another one who is obsessed with like I don't know what he, he's like a safe cracker or something but it's annoying and it and he's obsessed with like eating cookies whenever he gets emotional and they leave evidence the first time they enter the house are you serious See why I want to, like, at least think of something to try to get back into reviewing? But the only reason I took the retirement from the Fog Guy series was that, A, I could do the series, but also I can try to at least watch the films that I didn't have a chance to watch the first time around. But now, now I think, I have my movie to ramble on about. And besides that, none of the logic in the film makes no sense whatsoever. I so want to send an act to this movie and its producers asking them why? But as of now, I've got the marathon to continue with. And now, I've got this movie's memories in my head. And if I do bring back the Ferb guy, I think this will be one of the movies I will be reviewing. That is, if the Nostalgia Critic doesn't get to it first, of course. <sighs> Overall, Home Alone 5, The Holiday Heist, is not recommended. This was an ABC Family, or I should say, Freeform production. It is not worth the watch, it is not worth the buy, unless you're a critic, and it's not definitely worth it. Pretty much the only way you can actually get it is if it's on separate DVDs, or if it's included in the Home Alone 25th Anniversary Collection paint bucket. If you can actually find it in Costco or online. I was lucky enough, to, my parents were lucky enough to find this at Costco and get it for me for the holidays last year. At least the one thing I'm happy about with this set is at least I get Home Alone and Home Alone 2 on Blu-ray and DVD. But sadly I get the joy of seeing 3, 4, and 5 in this box set. Just, just tune in tomorrow for the newest movie we do. I'm just, oh god. I'm in agony right now. I don't know how to feel.